สวัสดีค่ะ and welcome back to Ed Brain State here on GBN Station. Here are now with me Gon Gan Oi Shit Pan. Let's start with the news update on the world largest prayer field in Vietnam, followed by the Buddhist exhibition celebrating the 50th year of India and South Korea diplomatic relations, the early Gandharan Buddhist exhibition in Hong Kong, and lastly, news update on the latest PhD Pali program in Cambodia. The Samson Hills, the last spiritual and cultural tourist site, was inaugurated in Tuta Commune, Donchong District, the Central Highlands Province of Lantong, on March 7. On the same day, the Vietnam Federation of UNESCO Associations (VFUA) presented the Certificate of Spiritual and Cultural Space for the Vajrayana Buddhist Space at the venue, which is also home to the world's largest bronze pearl veil stupa that set the Guinness World Record in the late 2022. Weighing 200 tons, the stupa is inlaid with 24k gold outside, over 37 meters in height, and has a diameter of 16.53 meters. The tourist attraction was built on high hills in Cambodge village, Chuta Commune, inspired by architectural works created by artists from Nepal, Rabuda Shakyamuni was born. Speaking at the event, VFUA Vice President and Secretary General Tan Van Ma said the granting of the certificate is meant to introduce architectural and spiritual values of the Vajrayana Buddhist space, as well as encourage the preservation, protection, and promotion of valuable cultural heritages for future generations. The Embassy of the Republic of Korea and Korean Cultural Center India together with the Jogye Order of Korean Buddhism, organized a cultural exchange event in commemoration of the 50th anniversary of diplomatic ties between Korea and India. The special exhibition titled An Encounter with Korean Traditional Buddhist Culture in India, The Land of Buddha, was held at the National Gallery of Modern Art, was opened to the public on March 22nd, and it will remain open till 30th April. At the exhibition, one can see the media art of Buddhist painting scrolls called Gebo, a symbol of traditional Korean Buddhist rituals, Korean traditional lanterns Yongdang Ho, a UNESCO intangible cultural heritage of humanity, and various photo works with the theme of Temple Stay. Korea's traditional Buddhist culture, which has received international attention, will be introduced to India through this exhibition. The exhibition will have various experience programs, such as painting Korean cultural items, experiencing Korean Buddhist scriptures, inking, and making lotus lanterns will be held at the exhibition hall from 22nd March to 25th March. Korean ambassador to India Shang Jae-bok said, in commemoration of the 50th anniversary of diplomatic ties between Korea and India, the Buddhism and Buddhist Cultural Exchange Program, which can be the foundation of the special strategic partnership between Korea and India, has a special meaning. Since Buddhism and Buddhist culture were introduced to India in the 4th century, they have been an indispensable core part when talking about the Korean way of life, way of thinking, and traditional Korean culture. Korean and India, the origins of Buddhism, are also closely connected to Buddhism. The ancient region of Gandhara, which spanned modern-day northwest Pakistan and southern Afghanistan, was home to a vibrant, cosmopolitan civilization situated at the crossroads of Asia. Early Buddhism thrived in Gandhara under the stability and patronage of several ancient kingdoms and empires, drawn there by the region's lucrative geographic position within global trade and commerce. This resulted in a Buddhist material culture rich in artistic influences and subjects from Europe, Northern Africa, and Asia, epitomized at Boham's forthcoming exhibition in Hong Kong, Cultural Exchange at the Crossroads of Asia, Early Buddhist Art in Context, opened to the public from 31st March to 20 April 2023 at Bonham's Hong Kong Sale Room. 
The exhibition showcases 22 objects from one of the finest collections of Gandharan art in private hands, providing a rare opportunity for the public to view artifacts in v i n c e n t Asia's ancient multicultural diversity. This collection is the fruit of one collector's single-minded pursuit of works of art from this unique period of world history. Forming the core of the 1992 landmark published exhibition, The Crossroads of Asia, Transformation in Image and Symbol in the Art of Ancient Afghanistan and Pakistan, and the Fitz William Museum, University of Cambridge, United Kingdom. This collection has been the ultimate point of reference for scholars and collectors for the past 30 years. Here are rare and beautiful decorative arts in silver, bronze sculptures, and gold jewelry, ranging from the 3rd century BCE to the 6th century CE, sharding numerous exciting cross sections in Eastern and Western beliefs and aesthetic traditions. SBU University, the oldest higher education institution in Cambodia, plans to offer a polylanguage doctoral program in the near future in order to boost education of students of Buddhism. On March 15, SBU signed MOU with the University of Mumbai in India. The agreement aims to establish a study forum that will improve the capacity of both students and lecturers in order to support the overall development of a quality and modern education system. The two signatories will focus on students' exchanges, faculty visits, cross-institutional studies, and the promotion of courses and pathways, as well as share information and services. Director of the SBU University said he is considering making similar agreements with several universities in Thailand, Sri Lanka, and Myanmar for Theravada Buddhism. For Mahayana Buddhism, he is currently in talks with universities in Korea, China, and Taiwan. And this week at b r a i n s i d e we'll be taking our viewers to discover how to safeguard our mind through the practice of meditation. Let's take a look together. Safeguarding our mind through meditation. In our daily lives. An array of problems of varying degrees correlating to our family circumstance, profession, education, and responsibilities can arise. When faced with problems, the methods people employ to solve them may differ according to their experience and familiarity, and with outcomes that are never predictable. However, if we are trained to examine problems with a still mind, we will be able to clearly identify their origin. This skill can be developed through the practice of meditation. Meditation refers to stopping one's mind. An unrest mind is a weak mind. When a mind is at rest, it becomes powerful, like how a focus of sunlight can ignite a flame. Meditation is for humans of all nationalities, languages, genders, and generations. Everyone can meditate, whether we work at an office or are self-employed. Our status, a housewife or a student, and our religious affiliation. Meditation is not limited to age or gender, and can be easily practiced by any individual. We all have two important components, which are our bodies and minds. To have strong and powerful bodies, we need to move or exercise. To have powerful minds, we need to stop and be still. When our bodies are tired, we need to relax it by sleeping. When our minds are nervous or sensitive, we need to relax it by meditating. Simple meditation instructions can be divided into six steps. Sit in a relaxing position, with the right leg on the left leg and right hand on the left hand. The index finger of your right hand should just touch your left thumb. Close your eyes gently, like how you would fall asleep, while keeping your back up straight. Examine parts of your body, 
make sure that no part is being too stressed. If you feel so, move your body slightly so that your circulation is good. That way, we would not feel any aches. Adjust your feelings so that you feel relaxed and clear. You may think of nature, river, mountains, sky, or cloud, or imagine that you are alone in the space with no humans, animals, or things surrounding you. You have no bonds or worries, be it education, family, work, or any other thing. Visualize a crystal ball, the sun, the moon, or any other star in the middle of your stomach so that your mind lingers there and not wander elsewhere. Suppose you have two strings, pull one string tightly from the navel straight through to the back of your body. Now pull the other string across from your right side straight through to your left side such that both strings interact at the middle of your body. The point of the intersection is the size of the end of a pin. Now suppose you place two fingers, one on top of the other at the intersection. This is then the location of the seventh base. For those who feel stressed when you visualize, you can just skip this process. Instead, just bring your mind to stop at the seventh base of the mind or in the middle of your body. Repeat the mantra, Samma Arahang, to yourself. Samma means correctness, while Arahang means purity. Feel as if the sound is coming from the seventh base of your mind. Protect your mind so that it is mindful and relaxed all the time. It should be neutral, empty, clear, still, and indifferent. There should be no rush at all. You should feel satisfied with such emotion, and in no time, you will attain the real inner happiness. When the water is still, all particles that are there would settle at the bottom. When your mind is still, it would become clear and pure. Be at present and your mind will be powerful. Benefits of Meditation The benefits gained from practicing meditation regularly are 1. A radiant, pure, clean and calm mind which aids in gaining a more peaceful sleep and one devoid of nightmares. Two, enhance personality, becoming more energetic and refined and gaining more confidence and self-control, which are applicable for any situation. Three, reduction of stress that disrupt our thoughts. When we are not feeling tense, our body naturally releases chemicals that increase our happiness and improve our overall health by fortifying our immune system and slowing the aging process. 4. Suppression of anger and tempers. As the mind becomes calmer and still longer through the practice of meditation, when the mind is stable and tranquil, it will have the power to restrain actions of body, speech, and mind. 5. Diligent practitioner will have improved memory and analytical skills giving rise to higher aptitude when performing various tasks. They will also have greater proficiency in learning and working and experience profound levels of inner happiness and wisdom. Appropriate time for meditation. Five to 10 minutes after waking up to get yourself ready for the day. Five to 10 minutes before going to bed to revisit the good moments during that day. Apart from those, 15 to 60 minutes during any preset time of the day. Meditation should be practiced regularly. It should be treated like a necessary and important activity in life. When you do so, you would be faced with happiness and success in life. When you are at the center of happiness, peace would expand to others in your family, society, country, and eventually creating world peace. Now it's time for us to say goodbye. Please make sure to check out all episodes of our Edward Insight News program on our official website, jbnus.com. Thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful week. 
สวัสดีค่ะ